Hello. This is the second lecture on hydrocarbon phase behavior. I presented in the previous video phase diagrams. What I'm going to do here is introduce the equations that we use to calculate various properties that we're going to use later in our, our calculation and also give you some idea of units and the types of property that we might expect um, for, from different hydrocarbon accumulations. Okay, so as before, we're going to go onto the uh, whiteboard here. Let me set that up for you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete a table here where I'm going to talk about the type of hydrocarbon. I'm going to talk about the composition. And then I'm going to define um, the what I call RS. So I'm going to just go through this. So the types of um, field we've already talked about, we have a dry gas, you can have a wet gas, we can have a gas condensate. Okay, we can have a near critical oil. We have our so-called black oil. And we have our so-called heavy oil. Okay, and we can talk about the composition. The composition of a dry gas is almost entirely methane, so it's principally C1. Okay, that's what I mean by C1. A wet gas, when you bring it to the surface, produce some liquid-like components. Um, C1 to C4 are all gaseous, so this must contain some heavier components. So its principal composition is normally in the range of that C1, C6, okay? A gas condensate, okay? Um, a gas condensate is where you can have a wider range. Typically, it's gonna have a sort of wider range of uh, hydrocarbons, but still principally looking at the lighter hydrocarbons. And these are, you know, when I show these, these are just examples. I'm not trying to say that these are exactly the values you should use. And indeed, I want to be careful about that. If you sort of Google what's a gas condensate, you will be directed eventually, say, to a Schlumberger um, glossary. And there it will define a gas condensate in an operational sense and say, if I'm standing at the wellhead, I produce this amount of gas and this amount of oil. And in 95% of the cases, if it's in this range, it's a gas condensate. That's fine as guidelines. However, what, we're, what we've already presented is a strict thermodynamic definition. Okay, so these are guidelines, not hard and fast rules. And, and therefore, I'm just drawing them here. They may be slightly different from what's in the notes, and they may be slightly different from what you will read elsewhere. And that's not because someone's wrong, it's because they're guidelines, as opposed to a rigorous thermodynamic definition based on the topology of the phase diagram, which was in the previous video. Okay, just so make, make that clear. Okay, and the critical oil will have a range of hydrocarbons. But again, will tend to be quite light. So C1 to C12, that's dodecane. Black oil will have C1 and maybe all the way to C20 plus. Right? But a heavy oil normally doesn't contain any lighter components, and normally just has the heavier, the longer chain hydrocarbons present. Okay, so that, that gives you some idea of the composition. As I said, guide lines for the composition. Um, but I've got this term RS. What is RS? Okay, RS is the solution gas oil ratio. And what it is, it's the ratio of how much gas to how much oil um, you have if you were to bring your hydrocarbon to the surface. And that sounds a bit vague, so let's define it strictly. And a strict definition is also written in the notes. You don't have to sort of transcribe what I'm saying here. What it is, is if at the surface I've got oil and gas, it's how much gas will dissolve in a unit volume of oil when taken to the surface? So the two volumes, the gas and the oil, are actually measured at the surface. Sorry, it's, it's say that again. It's how much gas will dissolve in unit volume of oil when the mixture is taken to the subsurface, taken underground, sorry, underground. So it's how much, will, how much gas will dissolve 
underground, but the two volumes are measured at the surface. They're two surface volumes. It's this much gas, this much oil. I take them underground and they're a single phase. Okay. So this measured as a gas volume divided by uh, an oil volume, and that's measured at the surface. So the traditional units that are used, okay, the units that are used are these. So let me just explain. Okay, M stands for a thousand. Okay, so that's a thousand. SCF, standard cubic foot feet. So a foot, they're about just over three feet to a meter. So this is a cubic foot. So a meter will be sort of just over three times, just over just over three. So they're about 30 standard cubic feet in a cubic meter. Okay. Um, yeah, it is an old fashioned unit and it is, a foot is about the length of, um, of someone's a foot, a bit, bit larger than mine, but anyway, that, that, that's what it is. Okay, so that's, that's the field unit. So gas is measured in cubic feet. Okay, so it's millions of standard cubic feet. Why the S for standard? Okay, a cubic foot is a cubic foot is a cubic foot is a cubic foot on Mars, it's cubic foot in the Andromeda galaxy. Um, but the S is there to emphasize that the measurement is taken at the surface. Okay, it's not that it's a different unit, it's just where it's taken. Then what we have is SDB, stock tank barrels. So oil volume is measured in barrels, gas volumes are measured in standard cubic feet. I know it sounds bizarre, that should be dimensionless in any unit system, but it isn't. Okay, so here the units I'm using is my gap. Now let's look at this. We've got two limits okay, that we can write down straight away. So the first one is if we've got a dry gas, it's only gas, there's no liquid. Okay, so it's an infinite amount of gas. Right, so that's, that's infinity. If it's a heavy oil, there is no gas. No gas will dissolve in the oil, essentially. So we take it down to the surface and no gas dissolves. Um, so that's zero. Then what we're going to think is the near critical oil is the sort of dividing line, right? On this side, it's more oil like. And then this side, it's more gas-like. So what I'm going to do, and again, it's not rigorous, but it gives you a sort of sense, particularly with these strange units. Okay. Um, what's the dividing line between something that's more gas-like and more oil-like? Now, I've defined it on the phase diagram. That's actually how you do it. But you can also get some sense of it. You know, when you produce the same amount of oil to gas, that's sort of 50-50, and then more gas than oil, it's more gas-like, and so on. But you can't do that in volumes because gas is much less dense than oil, right? maybe almost a thousand times less dense. So in terms of volumes, yeah, you produce a larger volume of gas than oil, even from an oil field. So you could think, well, um, I could look at a 50-50 ratio in terms of mass. So when I produce the same mass of gas as oil, that's sort of the near critical, that's neither one thing nor the other, and a greater mass of gas um, than oil is a gas gas field and a greater mass of oil is an oil field. Uh, that's fine. Um, in fact, that's what we're going to do. Um, you could also do it if you wish um, in terms of energy content. Okay, you could you look at the energy content, but that's a little bit more complex. Um, you could look in terms of value. You could say, well, you know, am I making more money for the gas than the oil? But that again really depends where you are in the world because the the, the gas market tends to be a bit local. Um, and in many parts of the world, particularly in the United States, with shale gas, actually gas is one that's say undervalued in terms of its energy content. So it's, that's maybe not the best way. So we're going to do it in terms of mass. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, if I produce at the surface the same mass of gas as oil, and then in the subsurface they, uh, they, they dissolve together, um, what is RS? What is uh, that ratio? Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So... Um, Let's imagine I have one stock tank barrel of oil. Okay, that's about 160 liters. Okay, and the density of oil is about 800 to 900 kilograms per cubic meter. So we have the density of oil, okay, times the volume is going to be the mass of oil. Okay, mass times volume. So this volume is about 0.16 cubic meters if it's one stock tank value, value, and this is 800. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you can do that calculation. I didn't do it with a calculator, so this is approximate. So it's about 130 kilograms. So a barrel of oil, your, your stock tank barrel, is about 130 kilograms. Okay, so it's equivalent to about 130 kilograms. This is just a sort of, you know, back of the envelope calculation. Okay, okay so 
imagine we have one stoked tank barrel of 130 kilograms. Um, now what we're going to do is imagine we have 130 kilograms of gas. Um, what volume does that have in standard cubic? Okay, so then that's going to be a sort of 130 kilograms of gas and oil together. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, um, you need to know the density, right? Because the volume of gas, right? The volume of gas, okay, is going to be 130 divided by the density of the gas. So I need to know the density of the gas state. Um, so how do I do that? The way in which I do it is using the ideal gas law. So at standard stock tank surface atmospheric conditions, uh, the, the phase behavior of a gas is uh, well described by the ideal gas law. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to erase some things here, if you don't mind. I need to give myself some room to work. Okay, so remember we got this 130, so let's just you know, keep with that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that bottom one, right, and then I can do some writing. Okay, so, so the, the equation we can use is PV equals nRT, and this describes gas. So let's just go through the terms. P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles, T is the temperature, and again, strict SI, don't wriggle out of it. Oh, let's try a degree C or something silly. No, this is Kelvin. Okay. Zero is absolute zero. R is the ideal gas constant, and in SI units, that's 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. I think most of you are familiar with this, and we're going to extend that equation in just a little bit. So PV equals nRT. Okay, so if we want to find the density of an ideal gas, this is actually very nice. You can always find the density of a gas. You don't, okay, you might say, I'm going to Google it. Okay, but we actually can, can, um, can uh, calculate it because the mass of the gas is N times M, and this is the molecular mass. Right? So this is the number of moles. This is the mass per mole. So Nm must be the mass of gas. Okay. So imagine this gas, you know, is going to be methane principally with some ethane, butane, and so on attached. So what's the molecular mass of uh, methane? It's C CH4. So C is 12, H is 4, so that's 16. Okay. Now there may be some heavier components if it's ethane, right? That's C2H6. Um, Okay, so that's going to be 24, that's going to be 30. So we might say that the molecular mass is 20. Now, again, units, right? And again, strict SI, absolutely strictest, rigorous SI you can think of. Okay, so what is it, 20 uh, somethings? No, that's 20 grams per mole. Gram, strict SI? Mm, no, isn't. it's kilograms. We need something in kilograms per mole, that 130 at the bottom there, that's in kilograms, not something else, not some funny unit, okay? We're getting to the funny units later, but you've got to be very clear. So it's 20 times 10 to the minus three kilograms per mole, okay? Otherwise you're going to get everything out by a factor. Okay, so now let's look at this. Um, density is going to be Nm is mass over volume, okay? So, we're going to then uh, write Nm, and then we're going to substitute out uh, the volume here, which is nRT, okay? And then we're going to have pressure at the top here, okay? So you can see that. And then the number of moles actually cancel. Of course, it doesn't matter how many moles we have. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually do the calculation. So M is 20 times 10 to the minus three. The pressure, we're looking at standard atmospheric pressure, um, atmospheric pressure is about um, 100,000, uh, 100 uh, kilopascals. Again, not kilopascals, pascals. So it's 10 to the 5. Okay, fine. Um, R, we've already said, is 8.314. Uh, T, what about temperature? Um, now, this is where it's a little bit different because you may be uh, used to standard conditions actually being zero degrees C, right? Zero Celsius. Um, actually, standard conditions technically uh, are 60 degrees F. Now, F is a Fahrenheit scale. The Americans still use it for temperature. I'm completely baffling because um, zero isn't actually zero. So just, just don't even go there with, with, with Fahrenheit. Um, 
So we're, we're, we're looking at something that's, um, I, I can't remember now, is it's, it's 18 degrees um, or 15 degrees C um, plus 275, right? So we're looking at an absolute temperature, which is, I think, around 288. Okay, this is approximate. You can look that up yourself. Okay, so uh, now let's um, try and calculate that. Obviously, I don't have a calculation, and I'm deliberately doing it very much by hand. So this is eight times three, that's about 2,500 here. Here, um, this is two times 10 to the minus two minus one. Okay, so this becomes 0.2, right? Sorry, that doesn't look right. Just gonna do this, six, no, it's 2,000, sorry. Silly here. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of this junk. Right, and write it nicely. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so this is, the density is about, this is about 2,000, this is about 2,000, right? So this is about 0.8. Okay, if you can see that, right? So it's 20 to 20 right, so it's 45, it's about 0.8. And now the units, we've got everything correct. Not grams per centimeter cubed or anything silly like this, it's kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so now that's, that, that's not very dense, right? And it, it, it's true, that's, you know, a, a thousand times, less dense than the oil, okay? But we're used to that. Air is about a thousand times less dense than water. Okay, so the volume of the gas, okay, is 130 over 8, right? And that's going to be 130 times 5 over 4. So let's think about that. That's 150, that's 650 over 4, that's 325. Um, it's about 150, isn't it? Something, something, uh, something of that order. Okay. So um, for a stock tank barrel of oil, we produce about 150 cubic meters of uh, gas. Right? And um, we know that one standard cubic feet is about 30 cubic meters. So in a uh, volume of gas okay, that we want is about 130 times 30. Okay, so that's going to be 0, 0, 45. Okay, so the dividing line here, right, is this is standard cubic feet. Okay, so the dividing line is where for similar mass, okay, I have a barrel of oil and I have about four and a half thousand. Let's round it up, 5,000 standard cubic feet. So this dividing line, I'm actually gonna to have to erase things here, otherwise you can't see. Okay, so this dividing line if you draw here is about five, okay? 5,000 standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel. That's the dividing line between gas and oil. So if you're producing at the wellhead, 5,000 standard cubic feet for every stock tank of gas, for every stock tank barrel of oil, you're not 100% sure. It could be oil, it could be a very light oil, it could be a very rich gas condensate. Okay, so that's, that's roughly speaking. Right, so it gives you some sense of the units. That's, that, 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 that's all I really want to say. So now let's, um, let's uh, you know, put, fill in some more numbers. Gas condensate is normally in the region of 50 to 5. Okay, so it's in, whoops, okay, I've gone back to that. This is not, okay, so um, gas condensate is normally in that region. A wet gas is normally 50 to about 500, right? Or indeed, typically greater than roughly 50. Okay, so in, in general, this should go all the way to infinity. So most wet gases are something greater than about 50. Um, a black oil is normally going to be um, RS, is less than about one, two, okay, and what about two to five? Um, that's going to be a volatile oil, right? So something that's that's quite volatile is in the region about two to five. Most black oils are one or two or less in terms of RS. Uh, most wet gases are greater than 50, and we've sort of filled it in, again, as guide methods, okay? So that hopefully gives you some sense of the sort of composition of the oil um, and obviously the composition of oil will also determine other things such as its viscosity, 
Um, normally at reservoir temperatures and pressures, um, volatile oils, lighter oils may have a viscosity slightly less than water at um, standard conditions. And again, the units of viscosity, right, you've got to get right, They're not centipoise for those who know, it's millipascal seconds or pascal seconds. So one millipascal second is water at ambient conditions. Actually at higher temperatures in the reservoir it tends to have a lower viscosity. Um, so the oil, light oils will be around one millimeter. Um, millipascal seconds. Obviously, gases are much less viscous, but when you get to heavier oils, you can have viscosities that are much, much higher 10, 100, 1000, even hundreds of thousands of millipascal seconds. Just to, just to bear that in mind, there's a very wide range of viscosity, and that's going to control how the fluids flow. Okay, um, I'm going to clear all of this and then just going to define a few more terms, and then uh, we will have completed this video. So I mentioned RS. Right, but there are two other R's that you come across, and I just want to define those before we start um, on doing other calculations with them. Okay, so this was the solution gas oil ratio. This is the ratio of gas production rate to oil production rate. And this is, sorry, I'm getting the wrong way around, GP over MP. Okay, so here are these uh, three. So RS is the solution gas oil ratio. This is actually strictly how much gas will dissolve in unit volume of oil when those two are taken underground. Okay. Um, R is actually more or less what we sort of said is today someone says, okay, how much gas did you produce? How much oil did you produce? R is that ratio. It's how it's the production rate. It's what you produce today. Now you might say, well, isn't that the same as RS? Not necessarily because to begin with, it might be when we're producing a single phase mixture from the reservoir. But if we drop below the bubble point, for instance, we preferentially produce gas. So RS how much gas will dissolve in the oil we're producing is less than the gas that's actually coming out of the well because we're preferentially, you know, producing all the gas. Okay, so R is simply the ratio of what we produce in terms of gas to the oil production, and it's a rate. It's what happened today. RP is a cumulative. It's the total amount of gas we have ever produced from our field divided by the total amount of oil we have ever produced from our field, and that's going to turn out to be um, very important when we come to talk about material balance, which is coming up next in this lecture series. Okay, so those are R's defined. Um, now we also want to define a few, a few um, other things. So actually, I think I can clear all of this. Okay, so we have previously uh, defined BO, which is the oil formation volume factor. It's the ratio of a reservoir volume to a surface volume of oil. We defined RS, which is how much gas will dissolve in unit volume of oil when taken to the subsurface. Um, and the next thing we want is the gas formation volume factor, which is a conversion of the reservoir volume gas to the surface volume. Now, we've looked at volumes using the ideal gas law. The problem is in the subsurface, we're at hundreds of atmospheres pressure, instead of having densities that are order one kilogram per cubic meter, we're gonna have densities of the order of a few hundred kilograms per cubic meter. And that's becoming almost liquid-like. And in fact, that's true. The molecules um, begin to get quite close together. There's some attraction between them, tries to clump things together, but on the other hand, they can't interpenetrate, so there's some repulsion. So you can't really use the ideal gas law, which basically says you've got point particles that are just bouncing around with no interaction and no volume. Okay, so what you do is you use what's called the non-ideal gas law. It's very simple. It's just uh, PV is NRT with a Z factor, or if you're American, a Z factor. And Z or Z is a function of um, temperature, pressure, and composition, right? 
And you might say, well, how do I know it? Well, again, it's something that's measured in the laboratory. I can take some gas from my field. Um, I know the temperature, I know the pressure, I can measure the volume, and I know how many moles I have. Okay, so I calculate the Z, the Z factor. Okay, so at the surface, so if this is in the reservoir, this is what we have at the surface, the pressure at the surface, volume at the surface, so this is the reservoir volume. Um, Z is almost exactly one. Okay. What's that? So BG can be written in terms of this Z factor. Okay, as follows, BG is the reservoir volume divided by the surface volume. Okay. So Z N R T over P. Okay. And then we've got the surface volume, which is N R T S over P S. So it comes as no surprise that N and R actually cancel. So what we're left with is Z, a ratio of temperatures and a ratio of pressures. Now, the way I've written it is um, actually in a non-dimensional form. So it's strictly correct for SI units. We'll show later rather bizarrely BG is measured. Um, reservoir volumes are actually measured in barrels, even if they're gas. So um, it's reservoir barrels divided by standard cubic feet. So you've got to do a unit conversion. So the, the pause at this point, okay? Um, this is in a consistent unit system. So what you see is a Z factor times the ratio of temperatures. That ratio of temperatures is close to one. T is greater than T S, right? When the reservoir is bigger, but that, that's close to one because we're looking at absolute temperatures. Um, but the big factor here is uh, the ratio of pressures, right? P in the reservoir is typically um, hundreds of times greater than the surface pressure. Okay, so BG, right, regardless of the units, as you, you, you might expect, is much, much less than one, okay, because the reservoir volume is less than the surface volume. Okay, so I can clear all of that, and I'm just going to show two quick, quick drawings. Um, Okay, so what we're showing here is going to be BO and RS as a function of pressure. Okay, and we're going to show a number of things on the pressure scale. Okay, so by definition, with surface conditions, BO is one because the ratio of reservoir to surface volume is one because we're not doing anything. I mean, I agree you might think about temperature, but let's let's just assume that's at the surface, okay? RS, then by definition, if we're at the surface, okay, the um, no gas will dissolve in the oil because I'm not changing the conditions. You've got gas and oil in equilibrium, so the gas has already come out of the oil. It's not going to go in without changing the conditions. Okay, so that's, that's what we have um, at surface conditions. Then we initially have BO. Uh, this is the initial conditions in the reservoir, so we're here, okay? And we have initial conditions here and here. And this value is called RSI because it's the initial conditions. It's where I first discovered the field. And this is BOI. OK, so let's think what happens to BO. If we're above the bubble point, okay, and I drop the pressure, you still have oil underground. And that oil will expand slightly. Right? Oil isn't very compressible, but it will expand. So actually what you see is that the BO increases slightly until it reaches the bubble. Then when it reaches the bubble point, as I drop the pressure further, gas comes out of solution. So the liquid volume shrinks right, because it's losing material. We're actually looking, we're not comparing the same volume in terms of the same molecules, it's losing molecules. Okay, so it shrinks. So BO tends to have, and it tends to, to go down quite sharp, something like that. So a, a, a small increase, normally uh, approximately linear increase and then a sharp decrease. RS, well actually, RS is constant above the bubble point because you're producing oil and gas, all of that gas will dissolve in the oil when it's taken to the subsurface. And then what happens is you see the same, RS will drop, right? it doesn't have to be linear as shown here, it will drop and again reasonably steeply. Why does it drop? If I go below the bubble point, gas has come out of solution. So when I take the oil to the surface, 
that oil can't dissolve so much gas when I take it back down to the lower pressures. Less gas will dissolve because I'm at a lower pressure. But think about it, lower pressures, less gas dissolves. So BO and RS are things that you measure. Okay, typical values here will be say about 1.5. Um, RS, obviously we have to think about the units um, and we did give you typical values of RS on the, on the previous screen. So these are things, these are things that are measured in the laboratory in fluid samples. Okay, so with uh, the non-ideal gas law, um, measurements of BO, RS and the phase diagram, we actually have a reasonably useful description of the thermodynamics of hydrocarbon mixtures. You might say, okay, well that's nice, how am I going to use it? Well, that's going to come um, in the uh, next video sequence where we talk about material balance, sort of keeping track of what we produce and what's happening in the reservoir. And that's going to be um, in the next video. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much.